So this next example, we're going to just look for what quadrant does theta live in, given some information about the trig functions of that angle. So you need two trig functions in order to figure out precisely what quadrant the angle's in. Uh, they can't both be related to just x or just y values. So in this case, we got a sine and a tangent. All right, let's start with sine because sine is one uh, is just y. So sine is y and y is less than zero. Uh oh, don't turn it into shape. Okay, so y is less than zero. That means we're already in quadrant three or four. So I'm going to go ahead and just cross out one and two because if sine is negative, you are not in one or two. You're definitely in three or four. All right. The other information we have is tangent is greater than zero. So let me go ahead and put a check next to the sine being negative. We've squeezed all the information out of there as we can. We're just going to focus on this tangent being positive. All right, what quadrants is tangent positive? What well, everybody's positive in quadrant one. So this could be in theta, a tangent being positive could put theta in quadrant one. However, we've already eliminated quadrant one. What other quadrant is tangent positive in? Well, just think tangent is y over x, and that's positive. So uh, you might be tempted to multiply by x, uh, but uh, you, you're looking at a very dangerous equation because you multiplied by x, and you don't know if x is positive or negative. If x is negative, the inequality sign flips. So this inequality I just wrote down uh, right here, you don't actually know if y is positive or negative using algebra. So let's use common sense instead. So y over x is positive. That means there's two possibilities. X and y are both positive. Or x is negative and y is negative. That's how to get that fraction to be positive. So there's two possibilities. They're both positive or both negative. So which of these is happening? Well, we already know y is negative. So that means uh, this y greater than zero is not happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and cross this out. This is not occurring. So there's one possibility. X is greater than zero and, oh, x is less than zero and y is less than zero. Where does that happen? Of course, that happens in quadrant three. So the answer is quadrant three. When you're answering on uh, your homeworks, just remember three, depending uh, on who is writing, might be written as a Roman numeral three. So just be a little aware of that. Um, it's useful to be able to write in integer, regular uh, notation, or Roman numerals. So just be ready to write in either of those two.